what was it like being on set early 1980s New York? How authentic did they get it? And you know, what can you say about totally that? Totally got it. Brought me right back to yelling at the TV when Regan was talking. Uh -huh. You know, or Reagan or whatever you call him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a great scene. I just saw the movie uh, yeah. a couple weeks ago. Um, so this movie is uh, has two really you know bright stars, two younger actors. Yes. Uh, what can you say about you know maybe any wisdom you imparted the, on them, or what was it like seeing them work? Listen, I the, the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I bonded with with Ryan, who plays Paul, the older brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was so happy to have him. We had a lot of fun. We yeah. just had a lot of fun. I didn't have to impart wisdom to him. Well, did they impart any uh, wisdom, wisdom on unto me. you? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So, um, what I really appreciate about this movie is just, it felt so, like, personal to the director. And, you know, James Gray, he's made these, like, big movies in space and the Amazon, but this is... Well, that he car, also right. did The Immigrant right. with so Marion Cotillard, which, mm -hmm. which wasn't right. space or anything. It's right. a very right. deep, deep uh, intimate film. Right. Yeah. But still, I guess further back in time from when he was growing up, and this is, you know, I guess during his childhood. So maybe, I don't know, did you see uh, anything with, with James, like, really just connecting to Oh, this? yes. Yes, he would, when we'd finish uh, 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 a take mm -hmm. or a four take, he would tell us just stories about growing up and about painting and about all kinds of stories. He was a great storyteller. I asked him if he was an actor and he says, he tried it a little, he, he was no good. I said, that's not true, you're a great friend. And, and uh, he, he would just, and, and when, would do things. He would laugh. He mm -hmm. would laugh afterwards. You know, he'd go in the background, but then he'd laugh. Or he'd we'd finish a scene, or someone would finish a scene, and he'd be crying. You know. Yeah. So it was very. It was life. It was life. It was very touching and fun and everything else to, to be on that set with him. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the passion behind the camera certainly translate. Uh, Onto the film. Onto the I screen. haven't seen it yet. I can't wait. Well, you're you're in for a treat. Um, so, yeah, last question. Do you think uh, you're ever going to work with uh, James Gray? Oh, again? I hope so. I told him I would do anything he ever needed, anything he wanted. So, I actually uh, interviewed you in the junket recently, and you and uh, Banks were telling me you listened to Sugar Hill Gang, Rappers Away, 500 times on set. Have you guys listened to it since? Uh, voluntarily. I remember one time I was doing homework. Oh wait, no, I was walking my dog outside and I was listening to music and I had a playlist. So I had just finished listening to one of my favorite R&B songs and then out of nowhere, Sugar Hill Gang started playing. Because I, during filming, I added it to my playlist, but I guess after I finished, I, I forgot to remove it. So it started playing and it just really brought back old memories, you know, just from being on set. And now, um, now that you're having your film festival premiere, shootings down your kind of wrapped all of that what what are sort of those friendships like that you made on set now are you you know continuing to hang out with banks and your other other co-stars yeah uh, before we started filming me and banks we found out that we had so much in common so we we spent that time just building a friendship and just doing amazing things together even throughout filming you know we would visit all these different places together I was with him when I first went to the Empire State Building I was with him when I first got on the subway you know we did a lot and after filming we would text every now and then, but we still kept in touch. So first time ever in New York when... When we started, started filming Armageddon Time. First time on the subway, and now you're here right now. Second time. This is my second, second time. Second welcome time. Welcome again. Um, yes, thank you. So what, I guess, what did you, do you like New York? Do you learn anything about the city? How cool is it getting to be in New York in like 1981, right? So, one, ever since I was little, before we started filming Armageddon Time, I always dreamed of being in New York. So I would have never thought that my first time being in New York would be doing something that I love, which is, you know, just acting. 
And uh, being New York, being in New York in the '80s, it was like I hopped in a time machine, and it was just so cool. You know, I was able to experience so much: the style, the environment, the way people dressed, the way they acted. And I'm just so glad that I was able to experience all this with my family. So I was talking to Marsha earlier, and she, she was saying that uh, James Ray would just bring so much emotion behind the camera, whether it's laughing or crying. I was wondering what you would, what you had to say on that. Like, what what energy did he give you as an as an actor? You know, sometimes the energy James gave after we would yell cut, I think it really did help my performance because I knew, I feel like I knew what I was doing wrong and knew what I was doing right. But James knows that I also want to be a director. So, you know, just watching him work was just an honor. And I really hope that I can work with him again. This movie is based off a lot of real events in James Gray's life. And, yes. you know, based off of real teachers. What, what did he have to tell you about his experience as a kid in school and his relationship with his teacher? Well, I mean, the circumstances of the, of the script, uh, that they were real and that what those kids had to go through, and, and we're talking about a, a class of 42 people, mm -hmm. um, uh, a class with no assistant teacher, just this guy, uh, and teaching every subject, math, science, English, gym, that's all real, that really happened to him. And they, he really was taken to an art museum and shown art the first time. And that really changed his life, mm -hmm. James's life. And uh, so to know that the guy who experienced all that was right there, and I and, and you know, I could check in with him. He go, oh yeah, that was real. That really happened. It really helped me uh, just keep it real and keep it credible. You know what I mean? And hopefully keep the guy that I played uh, three dimensional. Yeah. You know what I mean? So your your character has to stop a lot of shenanigans in yeah. the class. Um, yeah. Is that what what impression do you have of you know maybe James was he a troublemaker or were you a, a troublemaker back? Uh, in the well, school you know days? I I have two young kids. One yeah. who's like exactly James's age in the movie, and uh, I love my kids, but there's a level of uh, crankiness right, right. that I uh, for some reason was able to tap into pretty easily yeah. um, for the role. You know what I mean? I really used that. You know, like disciplining and, and, and like when things are just going haywire, you just, no matter how many parenting books you read, you just say, just, just stop it. You know what I mean? You just had it. Right. <laughs> so I'm sure you have a, a greater sympathy for uh, people in that position who have to deal with that times 40, right? Yes. Um, I, I really did have sympathy with him. He was asked to do in, almost the impossible. Can you imagine? I mean, and also dealing with, uh, very newly dealing with integration. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was really no uh, safety net for integration other than uh, I hope it all works out and this one teacher can deal with all yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, so, quite a lot to ask. Yeah. So uh, last question is I know there's sort of a, a coincidental uh, connection with another actor and this yes. teacher. So if you could describe that. Well, I'm, I'm really good friends with, uh, old friends with Amy Ryan. Um, mm -hmm. And I knew she grew up in Flushing, Queens. So I coincidentally asked, you know, because the script says that takes place at PS 173. I said, hey, Amy, uh, did you go to this school? She went, oh, yeah, that was my school. I said, okay, here's a shot in the dark. Did you have a teacher named Mr. Trickletown? She said, that was my teacher. So was she classmates with, with James? No, no, they yeah. weren't. And I actually told James about this, but he, he doesn't remember Amy, but they might have been a couple years apart. Okay. Um, uh, but she said, yeah, that was my teacher and sent me a picture of her in that class. Wow. Yeah. Small world. Really yeah. small world, but it actually helped me a lot. Did she, did she give you any feedback on yeah. your performance? Oh, she hasn't seen it yet. Okay. I mean, but, it hasn't opened yet, so, but right. she will, I'm sure. Yeah. So I actually interviewed you in the, the junket earlier, and you were telling me about how good you and friends Jalen and you have become. Um, and, you know, there's scenes towards the end, really kind of heart-wrenching scenes, you know, I won't spoil anything. So it was like being on screen with your buddy and you're know, getting in that headspace to you know, get those really sad kind of difficult scenes out. Um, I think if you get to know anybody good enough, you become comfortable with them and you get to um you get to be uncomfortable with them together and yet be comfortable. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. and I think that's what made it easier. Great. And um 
you know, you're working with uh, a lot of older actors that have had super long uh, careers. Um, you know, what's one of the the things that take away the most, like maybe a lesson you learned from Anthony or Jeremy or Anne or any of those people? Uh, well, with Annie, she taught me about the poet Rumi, mm -hmm. and she also taught me that there's different acting styles. I learned the same thing with Jeremy. He had a very unique acting style, the way he liked to act. He also wrote me in a letter that acting is like imagination, it's what you make of it. Mm. And with Anthony, he taught me to speak clearly. Great. Well, those are uh, all really wonderful uh, pieces of advice. Um, last question um, that I have is, what did it feel like stepping back in time 40 years? This film like gets, it feels so like, authentic 1980-81. Uh, what was that like actually being on, on set in a time capsule? Uh, yeah, well, I've never lived in the 1980s, so right. I really had no idea what it was like. But Happy Massey, the production designer, gave me a really good feel for what it would be like because he was able to give a physical look of how it would look. Mm -hmm. So you've taken us to outer space, to the Amazon, yeah. to a bunch of far places. Now you've taken us you know, back to your home. I guess, are you in a different headspace at all um, with that? And uh, just explain how maybe this is a departure from some of your earlier films, or or what what's similar and what's overlapping. Of course, I'm in a different headspace because I'm older. Right. <laughs> I'm a different person than I was at 25. So, or maybe I don't know how old you are, but I bet you're this close. Okay, you're different than you were when you were 16, aren't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. But you'll see. I think. Looking back now has more pull for me. It's because when you get to be my age, you see that you can look at the past with a certain measure of distance, not judgment, mm -hmm. but distance, and maybe more honesty. Yeah. Maybe I can be more honest. Yeah.